Hey what's up guys, welcome to the third tutorial of the series Special Effects for Games. I'm using Unity 5.5 and today we are going to see how to create this teleport and spawn effect. And by the way, everything is available in my Patreon in case you are interested to have access. So let's get started. Ok, so the effects we create are done with several particle systems. So it's a good practice to create an empty game object, which is going to be called Particle System Teleport. Next thing to do is add our first particle system with right click and rename it to Ground Symbol or Similar. And this will be our image or symbol for the teleport. As you can see, it's not facing up, so let's rotate it minus 90 degrees in the X, like this. And since this is not going to move, we want to say that the start speed is zero. Let's also change the emission to one and we will change the max particles in just a moment. Now in this case there is no necessity for the shape parameter to be on because we want this to be in center and almost steady. So let's turn it off. Now let's create a folder called teleport or similar and create a material called ground symbol. So now we need an image and I really recommend you to try to create your own textures but if you want to just speed up things we can go to Google and search for geometry PNG. I'm gonna use this image but you can pretty much use anything else. Import to Unity and we can go to the ground symbol material and change the shader to particles additive. Now we can drop our image in this slot and drop the material on top of the ground symbol particle system. Now by the way, if your image is black, you may need to invert it in Photoshop to white or with another image editing software. What really matters is that it's white because it will have more control on the color in Unity. You also want to give some outer glow. Now back to Unity, we need to go down here in Renderer and in render mode, select horizontal billboard and set the max particle size to 3. If your image doesn't appear, it's probably because it's below the ground and you need to push it up in the y axis just a small value. Ok, now back to our particle system, we want to set the max particles to 1 and let's use color over lifetime to smooth the beginning and the ending of our particle system. Now the keys on top control the opacity, in other words the alpha, and you can add one by clicking here, and the bottom keys control the color. Now let's turn on size over lifetime and press in the square so we can choose our curvature. This will control the size since the particle is born until it dies, and for this one we want something like this graph. We also want this to rotate, so we turn on rotate over lifetime. And we can make this rotate faster or slower by increasing or decreasing this value. Now we want to change the color here. And down here in color over lifetime, we can also change the color like this. You can play with this and see what you like. After you have found your color, you can duplicate this particle system and we want to change two things. One is the rotation direction, this one is going to rotate in the opposite direction. And to create some more diversity, we can change the size over lifetime and we also want to make the opposite, which means that we want to make it big in the beginning and small at the end. Ok, now moving on to the next element, which we can create easily in an image editing software. I'm using Photoshop and I created a new file with 2000 by 2000 call it circle and with this elliptical tool we can hold alt and shift to proportionally create a circle. Let's set the fill to empty and the stroke to white with around 25 pixels and we can center the circle by selecting the background and our circle and press these align buttons. Now if you double click on the layer, we can access the layer style and in outer glow, we can increase the spread and the size more or less like this. Let's also duplicate this material with Ctrl D 
and also rename it to circle. Now import the image we created and drag and drop to this slot. And now we can drag the material on top of the circle. Ok good, now let's make a few changes. One of the first things we want is to turn off rotation over lifetime, we don't need it. And then we want to change the size over lifetime. And by the way, I just noticed that everything is too small, so let's increase the start size of the ground symbols to around 10 and increase the circle start size to around 22. And now in a circle, let's make sure that the size of a lifetime only starts growing when the ground symbol reaches his max size. Something like this. And now in the max particles, we want to set a value of around 15. Let's also duplicate this circle particle system and call this one vertical circles. Let's turn on shape and we also want to turn off size over lifetime since all the circles will have the same size. And we also want to put a value of around 2 on the start speed, at least for now. And we want to end up with this shape for the cone. In the rate over time from the emission parameter, we can increase the particles rate and I'm gonna set a value of 2. Now if we select all the particle system, we can see that in my case the vertical circles are too big and I'm going to decrease the start size until it's more or less the dimension of the ground symbols. Ok, this seems about right and let's duplicate the vertical circles and rename this to smoke. Now we are going to need a smoke PNG image and uh, I'm going to use one from Google to speed up things. And after you have picked something like this, you can import it to Unity. Duplicate one of these materials and rename it to Smoke. Drag to the slot the image of the smoke and drop the smoke material on top of the smoke particle system. Let's change a few things like uh, the shape of the cone. We actually want something more like this, so the smoke goes from the center to the outside. Let's in the renderer change the render mode to billboard, like this. And this is starting to look interesting, we just need to set the shape to emit from the volume shell. And let's make the smoke more natural and random by setting parameters like the start lifetime, the start speed, the start size and the start rotation to random between two constants, which will for now have these values. And basically the start lifetime will make the smoke last less than others and these values on the start speed will make the smoke slower than others and the start size will randomize the size and the start rotation will make sure that every image that is created starts with a random rotation between 0 and 360 degrees. I probably am gonna change these values a little bit but you can play to see what fits best for you. Now let's increase the max particles to around 500, which will allow us to increase the rate over time in emission to around 60, maybe more. I'm gonna again adjust the shape to something like this, so the smoke doesn't expand too much. And let's turn on size over lifetime, because we don't want the smoke to start and end with the same size, so let's create a graph like this, and you can add keys with the right click. Now I'm gonna change the color over lifetime again. And I make a few more adjustments to the start lifetime, start speed, start size and max particles until I reach this smoke quality. You can pause the video and copy my values if you want. And I will also change the emission rate of the vertical circles to 2 and increase the max particles to around 10. Set the start speed to 1 and the start lifetime to 4. Now after giving these small adjustments, we want to create another particle system which can be called particles. We need to rotate it in the x-axis minus 90 degrees. Now these particles will have a cone 
more or less like this shape. And we really wanted randomness in several parameters, like the start lifetime, the start speed and the start size, like we did with the smoke. We also want more particles, so let's increase the rate over time to around 100, maybe 50, this really depends on what you like. Let's change the color over lifetime, which will smooth out the beginning and the end of each particles, like this. We also want to change the size over lifetime to something like this. And now, a parameter that we really want to turn on is velocity over lifetime, which will add an awesome natural randomness to our particles. And we can also change this to random between two constants, which will let us insert a minimum and a maximum in each axis. And something like minus 1 and 1 will do the work. Now you can also add an image to these particles. You can search for point of light in Google or you can open your image software, create a new file and with the elliptical shape tool let's create a small circle by holding Alt and Shift, create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N and with the brush tool set to an opacity of around 25, we want to paint in the center from a big circle to a small circle until we end with something like this. Hide the black background and the small circle and we can import it to Unity. Now we want to duplicate again an existing material with Ctrl D and rename this to Particle. Drop the image we created in the slot and drop the material on top of the particles. Now we can change the color over lifetime to something like this. Play with the start size. And if you want you can try to create a bunch of things like shining effects because it will look more interesting in Unity. Play a little bit with this until you find something you like. And after you have made some good particles, good circles and an overall well-looking effect, we can select the circle and if you scroll down, we can see that in Unity 5.5 we can add a light to the particle system. And for that we only need to create a point light like this, decrease the range, I'm gonna change the color to blue just to show you something, and now rename this to teleport light or similar. Drag and drop in the folder to create a prefab and delete the one in the scene. Now if we go back to our particle system, we can drag and drop the prefab light on top of this input for the light. And at the beginning you see nothing happening, because we need to increase the rate to 1. And we start to see a red light because I changed my particle system to a reddish color. Now let's decrease the maximum lights, increase the intensity and the range, be careful with the range. And I set the light to blue, so you can see that if you uncheck the use particle color option, the light will use its original color, and this is very useful. Now after tweaking the color and the size of the circles, I end up with this. And if this was for a game, it probably will be something like the entrance of the teleport but if we wanted to create a spawn effect, the easy way will be to duplicate this particle system, turn the looping off and set the duration to 3 in all the particle systems, like this. And then we could give a start delay to the smoke and the particles, so it doesn't start shooting smoke and particles at the beginning. And the vertical circles could be faster by just decreasing the lifetime to 2 and now we increase the start speed to 1.5 and increase the rate over time in the emission to around 3 and lastly, maybe increase the duration of the ground symbols and the circle to 4 and that's just a quick way to create a spawn effect out of the teleport effect and that's it guys, I hope you have learned something new and that you enjoy it if you want to have access to these effects and more, you can support me in my Patreon. Thanks for watching guys, subscribe for weekly game development videos and see you in the next tutorial.